Hi guys, welcome to Heartlight Tarot and Astrology. If you're a returning viewer, welcome back. If you're new to my channel, I am a tarot reader. I work with energies of the tarot along with what's going on astrologically to give you guys a predictive forecast. So if that's something that you guys are interested in, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell. I post bi-weekly general, bi-weekly love, and I'm also going to be um, posting the lunar eclipse and Libra readings towards the end of the month. Energies are going to be changing. Life is going to be shifting in all areas, especially for cardinal signs um, and even fixed signs in general um, it's because, you know, they don't like change. So <laughs> this is going to be a reading for the sign of Virgo for March 1st through the 15th. Um, it is not a personal reading or one-on-one -on -one reading. If you are interested in one, let me know in the comment box below. Um, this is just general for all Virgo placements, sun, moon, rising, um, rising especially and for everything um, if it is your sun sign it's going to be focused more on your fatherly father fatherly figures in your um, employer your job um, not your employer your career um, and if it is your moon then it's going to be a more subjective um, vantage point but I do suggest that you check out your moon reading whatever it is whatever placement it is because we do have that lunar eclipse happening this month so all lunar placements are going to be affected um, in more ways than one so um, I would check those out in uh, the video list um, I disappeared for a little while it took like a two or three week break um, there was some sickness in my home and also that Newman and Aquarius squaring my fears in eighth house in the eighth house um, my natal placement is 20 degrees of Aquarius. That new moon was 20 degrees of Aquarius, and it was squaring my eighth house of fears. So, I mean, just being honest and transparent with you guys, I needed a break. And um, considering I do work full-time, I do this for my own enjoyment and pleasure um, because I want to share this stuff with you. Um, I wasn't taking care of myself the way I was supposed to. So I figured out a different schedule, one that's going to work better for me. And um, I'm here and I'm back. So welcome to my channel. Um, a couple transits before I set out your cards. I have shuffled and cleared the energies. So I'm just going to pull them when I'm ready. Um, March 3rd, uh, Venus in Aquarius, squaring Uranus in Taurus. Um, for you, Virgo, Taurus runs your, rules your ninth house. Uh, Aquarius rules your sixth house. So Venus is in your, um, your house of health, day-to-day -day routines. Uh, things that get you ready for work, um, things that you do on the day-to-day -day basis to keep your life running, your health, um, your pets. Venus is going to be in that house and it's going to be squaring Taurus in your ninth house of higher knowledge, um, philosophy, um, different languages, uh, different cultures, uh, long distance travel. So there might be some kind of shakeups between those two areas considering they're squaring each other. Um, I would just, Venus once has this way of wanting to uh, work together in relationships. Venus is the planet of relationships. The fact that it's an Aquarius, a more free-flowing, uh, free-spirited energy, you might not feel very connected to your, to wanting to be in like a relationship at the moment. So maybe if your relationship is just fine, maybe you just need to like pull away a little bit. You might be feeling that uh, need for independence. Um, or or um, you might be taking better care of yourself and being very more nurturing or maybe even um, coming together with a relationship partner in regards to your health. So maybe some kind of new diet routine, um, workout routine, um, but it's squaring Uranus and Taurus. So it might be making you feel like it's changing the way that you look at things as far as like the higher knowledge of something, your spirituality. Uh, it might be affecting your spiritual beliefs. Um, maybe it's you're thinking about how it's affecting your finances in regards to long distance travel. Um, so just keep in mind you might be feeling that way. Um, the 8th of March. That is a funny day, a fuzzy day. So just keep that in mind. It is a Friday, I believe. Um, it's Mercury conjunct Neptune and Pisces. Mercury is the planet of processing information. It is the planet, planet of our thought processes, and it's conjuncting Neptune and Pisces. So Neptune is, is other worlds, right? It connects us to other worlds and other dimensions. Pisces is a very um, dreamy, dreamy sign, right? 
uh, very intuitive, very free flowing, intuitive sign, dreamy sign. So the fact that Mercury is in that and it is conjunct Neptune and Pisces, it's just saying that our thoughts might be more dreamy and we might not feel like we want to commit to anything. Um, we might just be wanting to think about, you know, our intuition and think with our intuition and not really focusing and bearing down on, you know, um, you know, dotting our I's and crossing our T's. I would suggest not um, signing contracts or doing any heavy work. If you have to work, I would just say, you know, double, triple check your work that day. It's going to feel kind of along the lines from, from Mer Mercury retrograde energy. Just, just going to feel off. Um, Mar uh, March 9th, Mars moves into Aquarius, square Uranus and Taurus. So we we're just talking about how Venus was squaring it. Um, Mars is going to come along behind it six days later on the 9th. And it's might, it might want to fight for a cause, um, fight for something that's going to benefit um, the group rather than one individual. Okay. Just make, keep into mind that, you know, this fight that you might be fighting, it might, um, or you might have wanted to push your way on some kind of something that's already established, whatever that is for you. And it might cause some shakeups in your foundations and your finances. So keep that in mind. Um, I wouldn't make any decisions on the 8th and the 9th, not even the 3rd. So I just would lay low on making decisions the first few weeks of March. Um, Mercury also enters Aries that day. Mercury and Aries. Um, it's like, how do I feel about this? What do I really think about what I'm talking about right now and what's going on, you know, in the world at large or what's going on in, in uh, spiritual, in my spirituality? Like what, what do I think about this, you know? And um, for you, let's see. I believe Aries rules your, let's see, so Taurus, Aries rules your eighth house of other people's money, uh, finances, um, te uh, taxes, debts, um, your fears, um, sexuality. So it's, it's, you might be thinking like, you know, how do I feel about those things? You know, cause that's going to be, um, for Virgo risings, Mer Aries rules your eighth house and Mercury is entering your eighth house. Um, let me go ahead and pull some cards while I finish the transit. We got one more left. It's Venus enters Pisces. That's going to be a more free flowing, uh, loving, um, compassionate, intuitive, connected energy. So I feel like that's a really good ending towards, you know, the middle of the month energies. So yeah, so right now we have the Eight of Cups for you, and it's clarified with the Temperance. Temperance is Sagittarius energy. Cups is water energy, Pisces, Scorpio, Cancer. So it also has the eclipse in the background. Like I was mentioning before, I'm going to be having a lunar eclipse um, in Libra reading for you guys here at the end of the month. Don't miss that. Hit the notification bell. I think this is trying to say that that eclipse is really going to make some changes in your life in the fact that and the factors of where Libra is. And for you, Libra runs your, rules your third house. So it's the way that you think you communicate um, the relationship with your neighbors, siblings, um, short distance travel, um, the Eight of Cups being here, walking away for some, from something that doesn't serve you, facing your fears. Um, maybe when Mercury enters Aries, the house of your fears, and maybe you're going to be thinking differently about the things that scare you and you're going to be walking away. How do I really feel about this? Right? What, how do I really feel about what, um, this is connected to, right? I feel like you're going to be leaving some stuff behind because you're facing your fears. The temperance being here, you're really going to be feeling out what's worth your time. What's not. The temperance is one one foot on land, one foot on water, and just kind of feeling the energy between both and being okay with both energies. Not knowing knowing when to make a move and not making the the wrong moves. Okay, making the right ones um, when you know that it's time based on how connected you are to your experiences. Um, in your recent past, you have the Queen of Pentacles, and it's clarified with the Eight of Swords. Queen of Pentacles. Um, I, it's one of my favorite cards, to be honest with you. That's just me personally. 
Um, so in your recent past, you might have been feeling like you really wanted to put some work into whatever it is that you were doing. So if that was at home, if that was a side job, if that was your job, or if that, you know, is a career, you run a business, or if that's a stay at home parent or stay at home husband or wife or whatever it is that you're doing, you were doing in the past, you really wanted to become really good at it. Okay. You wanted to become abundant in that area and become kind of like a connoisseur of like what it is that you're doing. And that's, that's because you freed yourself of self-limiting beliefs because you have the eight of swords here. So you're able to really like commit to something, watch it grow, um, even live off of it really, because this, this card reminds me of Taurus. Okay. Taurus is a very grounded, um, connected to the earth, like quality over quantity, you know, like that's what the queen of pentacles reminds me of along with, you know, the ability to really become a master of whatever you decide to do. So I feel like you were able to do that because you cut yourself free of all self-limiting, you know, you cut yourself free so you could see again, you see the eye, you let yourself go and you don't hold yourself back restrictively anymore. And because of that, it's helping you to face your fears because your blindfold is off. You took your blindfold off. You didn't let, you know, your mind hold you back. You know, silly beliefs that, you know, don't serve you. Didn't let that hold you back anymore. You became really strong at something. And now it's helping you to become strong somewhere else because you're moving into your fears. You're working through them. You're being patient with yourself and you're moving on. Okay. Um, unfortunately, in your upcoming future, you do have some kind of anxiety. I'm going to pull a little bit more for you. But I feel like you're going to be coming out of the cold because you decided to face your fears. Okay, that part's a good part, but you have the Nine of Swords clarifying it. It's going to make you anxious, okay? It might make you feel anxious. It might make you feel like you cannot sleep very well. You might have nightmares. Um, you know, you might have to kind of deal with some things that you had buried down, deep down inside you because you're facing your fears. But it's going to help you to move into a um, more positive light because the Five of Pentacles is change, okay? It's separation. It could be a divorce. It could be uh, moving past old, uh, you know, uh, foundational patterns, something into something more clear. Okay. I'm going to get you guys one more card because I don't like leaving on that note. And then I'm going to get you guys an Oracle card. Two of Pentacles, juggling, making the decision between two, between two types of lifestyles. Okay, Two of Pentacles. Pentacles is foundation. So I feel like you need to make a choice, and you may, and you're going to make a choice, and it's going to ha have you balancing two different things. So maybe there's something that you need to handle that's going to make you feel like you have to be balancing two different things and balancing life and trying not to drop things because your life kind of gets a little bit busier, but having your hands on two different things is a good thing because you can kind of feel out both and then you can make a decision. It's not a permanent energy. I'm going to clarify it for you. Why is the two of pentacles here? You guys got the king of pentacles. Okay. So maybe you're making a decision on two different life paths and you want and you're going to go ahead and pick the one you decided to pick the one that's going to bring you the most stability and that's going to help you to leave a legacy for those that are important to you. Okay. The King of Pentacles, he's not here for a fast fix. He is here for stability and maturity and he can lead and he can also, you know, create um, abundance for himself. He's already done the work. So maybe you're balancing two things right now. And because of that, it's making you feel like you're moving towards this King of Pentacles energy, right? You, you, you feel like you need to balance it for a little bit longer so you can get where you need to be. All right. And the Nine of Swords being here is you might be feeling a little anxious about what's going to happen in the future. But I do see good things coming for you. You already have good things and things good things are coming for you. Um, for some reason, I tend to get negative comments on Virgo's reading. I get more positive. Don't get me wrong. 
I'm just saying, if you are here and you feel the need to comment something negative in the comment box below, it will be deleted. If it keeps happening, I will report you. So or I'll do what I need to do to get you off my channel. So I'm just letting you guys know now. <laughs> for those people that have given me love and, and support in the past, I just want to say thank you for everything. I, I do honestly get better comments than I do negative ones, but I just wanted to be clear. For your first advice card, you guys got the Three of Pentacles, working together as a team with somebody, and you got the star. All right, so you had a lot of planets going through your sixth house, and star represents Aquarius. You had a lot of, um, and your sixth house is ruled by Aquarius, excuse me. You're probably like, what are you talking about? I'm going to get you guys a um, animal spirit card. You guys got hyena. There's positive, and you see, you see the um, moon in the background. I feel like this this lunar eclipse in Libra is going to really be changing things for you. Um, what do I think about when I think about the hyena? Well, I think about how it does anything and anything to survive. Everything and anything to survive, right? I feel like they have a wit about a wit about them. So I'm going to read about your um, your oracle card, and then I'm going to go over what I see in your advice, okay? Humor, wit, and sarcasm. The hyena personality is a jokester and crowd pleaser, but below the surface, they are unfulfilled dreams to be realized. There are unfulfilled dreams to be realized. When the hyena hard card appears, it's time to reflect on your reliance on sarcasm and humor to express your truth. Are you using jokes to hide out old resentments in relationships or to mask things that, that you feel uncomfortable discussing? What would happen if you took your goals seriously? Maybe you just need to take yourself seriously. And I think in order to do that, you have to feel your way through something. Maybe you notice that your humor is not getting you as far as you would like it to. Um, when in balance, charming, witty, funny. Fun to be around. When out of balance, scrappy, petty, and suspicious. To bring into balance, sobriety. Are you drinking too much? Um, do you have an addiction to something? Um, if not, I feel like sobriety can be, you know, just as easily put, you know, you don't have to be addicted to your sense of humor in order to express yourself. That could be sobriety as well. Um, yeah, so I just feel like maybe you feel like you have to put this face on for some people and be, you know, funny and sarcastic and just like always have the answers, maybe really witty. But I feel like you're going to be letting that go. Um, it says, yeah, are you using... Well, are you using jokes to hide old resentments in relationships or mask things that you feel uncomfortable? <clears throat> okay. Maybe you're facing your fears and really thinking about what it is that you really want. And it's, and it's causing some anxiety. It's causing you to face your fears like with that Eight of Cups energy. Maybe you're going to be leaving something behind with that solar eclipse in Libra. Don't miss out on those videos. I'm not going to drop you guys this time. Um, yeah, so I'm going to actually finish what I started. <laughs> I have a better schedule, so I will show up this time. I promise in the recent past, you have the three of pentacles. Okay. Pentacles is your foundation. It's your money. It's your, um, can be, it, be, it could be considered goals too. And the three of pentacles here, it just shows me in the advice. Um, it's okay to work together with somebody. It's okay to, um, you know, maybe work together on a contract with somebody, work, work, um, together, um, in order to get a position that you want, um, and just kind of like create this give and take maybe, um, yeah, I just feel like always you're going to be moving up. Okay. Cause I just, you know, pulled the two of pentacles for you and this three of pentacles is here following it. That means that as you just keep, you know, reading the fine print, is what I'm getting out of this. Um, make sure that it's what you really want. 
and that you're able to put your part into something, whatever it is that you're doing. Okay. Make sure that you are a part of this unit, this next step in your life, that you make yourself important. You make yourself serious enough to be a part of something that is so grand. Something big is happening for you with that King of Pentacles that came out. And um, I feel like you're expanding and you're growing and you're, you're just. I don't want to say maturing, but that's the only word that comes to my mind right now. Um, just know that you deserve to be part of that group. Okay. And you also have a star here. It, it's the this, this card of hope. Don't lose hope. Okay. Make sure you keep yourself healthy because your Aquarius rules your sixth house of health. But keep yourself healthy. Don't lose hope. Make sure you hydrate. That's for some of you. <laughs> Because there's water, right? I don't know why she's naked, but you know, I'm not here to judge. Anyways, Virgo, I wish you all the best and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.